Welcome back. We will start with part two where we are going to discuss about how you can migrate uh, to autonomous databases using MB2 ADB. So on oracle.site you have uh, a web page dedicated to this and uh, it provides more information about the tool. But uh, before we start uh, using MB2 ADB, uh, let's talk about uh, what is the general migration path uh, when it uh, comes to on-prem. You have a database on on-prem you want to bring uh, data to object storage and from object storage you take them to autonomous oracle database because you cannot use arm and clone or uh, something so that is the suggested way either you can use sql developer uh, if you have certain files to upload you can do that but uh, it is a suggested approach to bring maybe the data pump uh, kind of exports to object storage and or even for SQL loader files, uh, once they are in object storage, you would be able to move to autonomous database. On a, a general uh, migration techniques, DBMS Cloud, that was uh, developed, uh, which is a PL SQL package, and that provides support for loading data from uh, various format, whether it's text or parquet and Avro files in the cloud to your tables to autonomous data warehouse. And DBMS Cloud supports uh, loading from uh, various object storage. So to start with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Object Storage or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Object Storage Classic or any Azure uh, Blob Storage as well as Amazon S3. So it has compatibility with uh, all of uh, these. The more details about using uh, this particular method, DBMS Cloud, you can refer the MOS link which is 2493502.1 and they have given examples on uh, step by step how you can create a credential or uh, how you copy data or how you define the external structure so they are covered under MOS node and you can utilize them. The other methods SQL developers as well as data pump SQL star loader or MB2 ADB so these are the supported methods if you want to move to autonomous databases. From cloud migration based practice uh, you can use the schema advisor when you migrate to Oracle autonomous database and they provide you insight on what is uh, available in on-prem or the source like which can be moved or which can, cannot be moved because there are certain restrictions as well and we expect mostly to bring the data and uh, the remaining stuff like any kind of partitioning requirements or indexes and things so that can be always uh, done within the database by its own right so most of the things it decides and also changes the formats and all so just uh, bringing data as well as the referential integrity or business constraints uh, is mostly enough for most of the time. And this uh, MOS note again 2462677.1, they provide the schema advisor uh, related details and it is highly suggested to use that one on your source system uh, so that you can evaluate what can be moved or what uh, you have to factor during the migration. You can use the MB2 ADB when migrating to Oracle Autonomous Database and we are going to cover more details on uh, this tool. So the MOS note uh, which talks about MB2 ADB uh, is 2463574.1 and uh, move to Autonomous Database is basically a new tool which uh, will permit you to load data and migration from your on-prem to Autonomous Database Cloud which uh, basically leverages the Oracle Data Pump uh, export expdp impdp and uh, with a single command it is able to migrate to autonomous databases so data pump import uh, allows you to basically import data from a data pump file which resides on oracle cloud infrastructure object storage and uh, you can save your data to your object storage and then that will be used for loading them to autonomous database using mb2 adb so there are several operations which are uh, supported. So move to autonomous databases uh, supports operations uh, such as like auto operation or expdp operation, impdp operation. Uh, so they are covered in more details into the MOS node. So some of the prerequisites for using MB2 ADB is uh, you must have the OCI command line interface installed. And if you have not already done it, you can always uh, take that from GitHub or from the cloud.oracle.com uh, site. So it takes a few minutes to get uh, installed and uh, the prerequisites for them is Python and a uh, few packages. And once they are installed, you will have your tenancy related details like OSID of your tenancy or uh, 
or tokens and a few other uh, details with respect to uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure environment and uh, MB2ADV will take use of that and it can help you migrate. Uh, the operations which it is covered like as I said auto operation or EXPDP, IMPDP, uh, it has ability to create bucket, it can delete buckets, list bucket operations, or put dump, get dump. So all of these are uh, supported methods uh, along with this tool MB2ADP. So uh, the most note talks about like how to you will get started by installing it or any deinstallation it provides the script for you to uh, use for migration. On a high level, uh, this migration tool MB2 ADB, uh, there are different uh, operation modes, and these are auto, EXPDP, and IMPDP. And then we have OCI object storage bucket operations, as well as it supports the uh, uh, object storage object operations, such as uh, delete dump or get dump or list or uh, putting the dump into that. On the right side, you see an example on how to use uh, this utility MB2 ADB uh, along with various parameters. Auto operation is uh, one command operation here that performs entire load data process into autonomous database cloud and uh, EXPDP does it from the source which is schema based basically and uh, it can upload the dump over to Oracle object storage and uh, IMPDP then takes over to autonomous database cloud. The IMPDP operation is going to import the schema into autonomous database cloud which is um, copied over to object storage uh, using expdp command here here i'm concluding the part two uh, i believe like you might have got understanding on uh, how to use mb2 adb utility and the moss node which talks about much detail along with examples so i will encourage you to take a look at them and uh, now with that one i'm going to move to part three where we will cover oracle zero downtime migration so thanks for watching